The Mothers of Real Estate is sponsored by Streetwise Mortgages, an award-winning mortgage brokerage serving clients across Ontario. Book a complimentary consultation or learn more at streetwisemortgages.com. joining us today. Mothers of Real Estate is about inspiring and educating women, especially mothers, to explore the possibilities that real estate can offer in order to move you towards the goals that matter to you and your family, both emotionally and financially. My friends and co-hosts Rachel Oliver and Jillian Irving are here with me today and we're going to discuss how to pick a real estate strategy that fits with your life, not fights with it. <laughs> So, girls, what strategy do you guys use to fit with your life and not fight with it? I love that saying. Jillian, whenever I say that, it just reminds me of you and your, your words of wisdom. Well, it is true. I, look, any strategy that you pick, though, before we even get to the strategy you pick, you have to kind of figure out your goals, right? Because the strategy that I want to employ might be totally different from you because I want to achieve... Or I might want to achieve completely different goals than you or Rachel, for example. So, I mean, before we even talk about strategies, we have to talk about goals. So, for me personally, my goal um, was to develop a cash intense uh, real estate strategy. So, I ended up landing on student rentals. Mm -hmm. That was because my goal was to have a, a, a cash rich strategy. Rachel, yeah. what was what was your goal? Well, and it's true to your point. You know, when you're when you're talking to people, the first thing they dive into is how did you choose the rent to own strategy, and that's what mm -hmm. I focus on. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Before we get into that topic, you know, talk about more about your goals because my goals don't necessarily match somebody else's goals. Mm -hmm. So what I did is not necessarily going to be a, a, a good fit for somebody else. My goal was all about a cash intense strategy that allowed me to replace my job income mm -hmm. with income through my real estate investing business. I really want wanted to leave my job behind, not just my job, I wanted my husband to leave his job behind too, mm -hmm. so that we could actually control life on our terms mm -hmm. and, and make money, and not just making money for ourselves, but also helping other people in mm -hmm. the process. And the rent to own strategy is that investing with a purpose. Mm -hmm. So it's cash rich, cash intense, uh, five to $700 cash flow. Mm -hmm. a month and it you know and we kind of did the math well how many of these do we need to have in order to supplement our paycheck and eventually basically uh, take away from my paycheck and make that the paycheck right. so mm -hmm. we worked the numbers it was really about a numbers game and a lifestyle decision for us and you achieved your goal we absolutely did and absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm very honored um, and the strategy that we actually offer um, does in some capacity help Millennials we'll talk a little bit more about that but I, I want to mm -hmm. hear about what your thought was in picking your strategy and the goals that you were meeting well, my strategy, as you know, is buy, rent, hold, so it's probably the most boring of the strategy. But the things I love about buy, rent, hold is it's not only probably an easier strategy to pick, but it really lets you save for those bigger ticket items in life right. and also generate some monthly cash flow. Mm -hmm. Because my goal was to be a stay-at-home mom, so I needed that extra supplementary income, but I also wanted to pay for these bigger ticket life items, such as the university education of kids. our four kids. Which is a huge ticket item. Like That's a huge, huge, huge expense. So I it guess you is. need... No one's gonna be able to like go to work and clock more hours to kind of save that you sort really of money. You can't. Like it's we hard. could have invested in other vehicles and generated the cash flow to pay for groceries and 
ballet mm. lessons and all these <laughs> daily right. costs that people struggle to pay for. Mm. But what about those things? Like unless you really are working a full-time job, it's really difficult to pay mm. for these costs. So what's interesting with with you guys, I'm kind of uh, squashed in the middle because your strategy is cash intense with mm. the student rentals, but you also have the benefit of what Monica is doing and that long-term horizon, that long-term hold. Right. So buy, rent, hold with cash intense in intensity is kind of like you're marrying the, the, the two strategies, yes. whereas mine is kind of, you're in and out within three to four years. Right, so while you're lucky because you don't have to deal with tenants and toilets, which really truly can be sometimes really painful, um, and especially I'm a student rental investor, so I know all about like big trouble, but, um, but you don't get to benefit from that long-term appreciation because your deals are in or out, so you do really well in the short term, but you don't have the long-term mm -hmm. horizon where I get the long-term horizon of kids at university. Yeah, I mean, it, it checks all the boxes, though. If it gives you the income that you're looking well, for, this is it. if it gives you the kind of day-to-day -day lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that you want to be involved in, mm -hmm. if it satisfies those two major things, I think that helps fuel mm -hmm. your decision making. Well, yep. again, it, it, the goals, and we can, we're going to say this forever, and in our courses we talk about this forever, too, is the goals matter most because that's your beacon. That's what's going to point you to where you want to go. Your goals, your why, are going to always keep you on the path, even when all the hiccups happen mm -hmm. and the detours and the roadblocks and, you know, the crazy stuff that happens because it always mm -hmm. does, but your goals, what you know you want to accomplish, and your why will always keep you on that path when things get tricky, right? You know, as moms, we all know one of our, our most important why is our kids. Right. And so sometimes parents struggle. They don't have the money for down payment. We've talked before about how we do strategic refinancing. Mm -hmm. Today, our guest is not only younger than us, as he is from the millennial generation, <laughs> but he is someone who has done the exact opposite strategy that we've done. When we return, we're going to bring on Sean Cooper, author of Burn Your Mortgage, who is also a personal finance expert and money coach, who's going to share his story of how he burned his mortgage by the age of 30. We'll be right back. The Mothers of Real Estate is sponsored by Streetwise Mortgages, an award-winning mortgage brokerage serving clients across Ontario. Book a complimentary consultation or learn more at streetwisemortgages.com. Streetwise Mortgages is a multiple award-winning mortgage brokerage focused on providing tailored mortgage strategies and top-notch lending advice to clients who are looking to build wealth through investing in real estate, self-employed clients, and clients who are dealing with separation or a divorce situation. Learn more at streetwisemortgages.com. back. Before our break, we were discussing how any investment strategy needs to fit with your life, not fight with your life. Our guest today, Sean Cooper, made news headlines around the world where he paid off his mortgage at 30 on a house he just bought three years prior. Welcome, Sean. Thanks so much for having me. That is absolutely <laughs> incredible. I mean, how does someone 27 years old, you buy your first house and then pay it off three years later most people your age are not even thinking about home ownership. Tell us more how you did this. Sure, I think it has a lot to do with my upbringing because growing up, my mother was a single mother raising my sister and me, and mm -hmm. she almost lost the family home on two occasions. So that really instilled in me the importance of paying off debt super fast. So once I bought my house, I knew I didn't want to have a 30-year mortgage hanging over my head for 30 years. So I just basically tried to earn as much side hustle as possible and reduce my expenses and by doing those two things I was able to pay off a 30-year mortgage in only three years and save myself over a hundred thousand dollars in mortgage interest. So that would have been the cost of borrowing if so if you had gone longer yes I, did you actually do the math like if I amortize this mortgage over 25 years like the rest of us yeah. people do yes. what would the cost of borrowing have been? Yes exactly um, I did the math and I actually had a 30-year mortgage so if I had paid it over 30 years, um, based on like paying it off in three years, I saved myself over $100,000 yeah. in Oh, that's where it, okay, yes. wonderful. That, wonderful. That, is an, like, that is an astounding accomplishment. First oh, of all, you. I don't think there's very many people who we've ever met or will ever meet who will 
be able to accomplish such an incredibly tight financial goal in such a short time. So Especially congratulations to you. Well, yes. this is it. Like, I mean, I have a teenager. I mean, I know you're not a teenager, but a lot of the people I meet, the, and I am a student rental investor, so I see students. You were a student when you first started saving, and yes. my, my tenants, they're not they're not doing the hard work it sounds like you were doing. Can you take us back a little bit to, well, one, I think we need to understand your numbers, like what your house costs sure. and what you put in it, and how you came up with those funds. Sure, so I bought my house for $425,000 mm -hmm. in Toronto, and that was in August 2012, so right. you could actually buy a decent house for that much back right. then. I made a $170,000 down payment mm -hmm. or a 40% down payment. Amazing. And that left me with a mortgage of $255,000. Now, how I came up with such a sizable down payment was that um, I worked three for three years full time and I've also even graduated debt free from university. So I started saving my down payment back in university by working like three or four jobs during the school year. Wow. And did you pay for your own university education as well in the process? Yes, I mean, my parents didn't pay for it. Like, my mom, mother was a single mother, so, you know, I was more than happy to pay for it, and that made me appreciate my education even more by paying for it myself. I knew it! I knew it! I'm going to make my kids pay for their education. So, why pay for my kids' education? That's my why. You don't think they appreciate it? I'm going to change my why. I'm going to buy those shoes. I think so. Yeah. There we go. So, you've redirected Monica entirely off for paying for her kids' education. But it's amazing. So, uh, you know, it, bring, it raises a really big point because I hear people talking today about, they're like, I can't afford to buy a house in Toronto or I can't afford this. And it sounds to me like, like perhaps they're not limiting something in their life. Like mm -hmm. you worked, how many jobs did you work at university? I worked like three or four jobs throughout the school year. I worked uh -huh. full time during the summer. So uh -huh. basically worked as hard as I could not to have like, you know, $30,000 of debt when I graduated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. where did you hold that money? Where were you holding your savings? Um, since that money was kind of, like I knew that money was earmarked for a down payment, um, I was, uh, like basically putting it in a high interest savings account because I didn't want to like invest it in stocks or you know Anything mutual like funds that. because you know that, that that's a bit volatile so yes. I put it some more safe. So uh, at 27 years old, you had a 250, uh, $225,000 mortgage. What would you say made the biggest dent in getting this mortgage paid off? So um, I was like everyone. I was going to you know live upstairs and rent out the basement and then. Um, I got the idea, you know, why don't I live in the basement and rent up the upstairs? So that's what I ended up doing. And I was basically able to double my rent that I earned. And I would say the rental income put the biggest dent um, in my mortgage because my tenants paid the rent on time. And, right. you know, basically the rental income covered all the mortgage on its own. And mm -hmm. any extra income that I earned, I could make prepayments against the mortgage. And those were prepayments that went 100% towards principal. So that's how I basically paid off my mortgage super fast. So how much more each month were you making from these, these extra rental income payments? Well, I was charging my tenants about um, $1,500 a month in rent. And uh, I was making like mortgage payments of $800 a week. And I was earning like, I was working full time and um, also earning freelance income from being a personal finance journalist. So. All that extra income, you know, I could put towards the prepayments. Of course, I had living Incredible. expenses, but I'm somebody who's super frugal. I don't own a car and didn't take any extravagant vacations during that time. So mm. I kept my expenses to a minimum and basically all that extra money, I was able to put it towards my mortgage and pay it off super fast. Excellent. That, that is fantastic and inspirational. Well, Stay you. with us as Sean Cooper will share tips on how millennials can get started investing in real estate. The Mothers of Real Estate is sponsored by Streetwise Mortgages, an award-winning mortgage brokerage serving clients across Ontario. Book a complimentary consultation or learn more at streetwisemortgages.com. Do you want to invest in real estate but are too afraid to make costly mistakes? The Mothers of Real Estate online training will give you all the tools and resources you need to take you from confused to confident investor in seven weeks flat. Visit mothersofrealestate.com today to enroll.
welcome back. Before our break, Sean was telling us his personal story about how he became a homeowner at the age of 27 and managed to burn his mortgage by the age of 30. So the, all of this wonderful celebration of your accomplishment is phenomenal. But there are naysayers out there who would argue that today's lending rates are still quite low. So why pay off your mortgage when you can use this extra money to buy more properties? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it all comes down to the level of risk that you're comfortable carrying. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I just couldn't sleep at night knowing that I had six figures of mortgage debt hanging over my head. So, you know, a lot of people are using low interest rates as an opportunity to borrow a lot of money. But for me, um, rather than use low interest rates to get in debt, I see them as a great opportunity to pay down your mortgage super fast because more of your money from regular payment is going towards um, principal as opposed to interest. Like, you know, using uh, like the average mortgage as an example, about half your money when you take out the mortgage already mm -hmm. is going towards mm -hmm. principal. But if we went back, about 10 years or so, only about 25 cents on the dollar would go towards principal. So mm -hmm. if you're super focused, you can pay down your mortgage super fast. And that's the way that I saw it personally mm -hmm. with me. It's a really interesting perspective. You're right. A lot of people are looking at like, wow, money's so cheap. I should borrow. And mm -hmm. you're like, money's so cheap. I should pay off my principal. I mean, yeah. it's just a really interesting twist on the, mm -hmm. on the thinking that is prevailing out there. Um, so I have a, qu a question for you. So you obviously had to take extreme measures to save the kind of money you did to be super frugal, to meet the goal that you wanted to meet, yes. right? Having happened what happened when you were a young man and your parents, how would you suggest that a family, say a young family with a couple of kids aggressively pay down their mortgage, but they can't, I mean, they need to have a car and they have these expenses. How would you, what kind of suggestions would you give them to help them speed, speedily pay off their mortgage? Sure. So I would say um, for most people after mortgage or rent, their two most costly expenses are transportation and groceries. So look for ways to save on those. Now, for me, I didn't own a vehicle myself, but I realized if you have kids, it's not practical mm -hmm. when you need to run them around to soccer Everywhere. practice and errands <laughs> and all that. So, you know, perhaps you could just own one vehicle instead of two and buy like a secondhand vehicle um, from a registered mm -hmm. car dealer from a trustworthy source. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm not saying like, don't let your kids have fun and sign up for activities, but perhaps like if they're into hockey, you could mm -hmm. buy the um, equipment like secondhand from Kijiji or Craigslist, or maybe mm -hmm. even from like, you know, um, a family friend just to save money because kids, you know, grow up so darn fast that you're going to have to keep buying new equipment for oh, them every the season truth. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like sometimes you've bought stuff and they're outgrown it before you even get it home exactly. from the store, honestly. So are you suggesting with these savings that they do, that they should take these savings and use them towards accelerating payments on their personal mortgage? Yes, I mean, as long as they're not, they don't carry any high interest debt, then I'm definitely in favor of that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So would you also then suggest that families uh, consider bringing in a tenant? I know they wouldn't rent out the upstairs, obviously, but um, creating income uh, from a basement apartment, would that be something that you would recommend? Yes, definitely. As long as it makes sense. I mean, rather than using your basement for storage, you could bring in some uh, decent amount of extra income and pay off your mortgage a lot faster. And, you know, if you need some of that extra space, you know, and you have a spare bedroom or two, then perhaps mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, you could use like um, one of the websites out there to rent your property, like a uh, room out short term. Yeah. And, and you offer some coaching um, to help people understand a little bit more about how they can achieve some of their financial goals. What's the first thing that you look at? Well, I basically want to get a snapshot of their finances. So I make them do a net worth statement as mm -hmm. well as a budget because, um, you know, if you want to accomplish goals, you kind of need to see where you're at right now and where you'd like to be in the future. So I find, you know, having a snapshot of their finances and seeing where their money's going is, you know, a good way to be able to assess the current situation and help them reach their goal, whether it's saving a down payment or burning their mortgage like me. Now, are most of your clients like millennials like yourself or are they older people like say our age or even older? Or <laughs> <laughs> what are you calling Thanks yourself? <laughs> I mean, it really varies. Like I have millennials reaching out to me for help on saving a down payment and I also have like um, baby boomers reaching out to me, you know, want to pay off their mortgage before retirement. So, you know, I'm getting people from all ends of the spectrum. Now, would you advise millennials, what would you advise them to do to buy a personal residence or buy an investment property? 
Well, it all depends on where you're buying. Like, for example, in the city of Toronto, it's not really affordable for the average person to buy a detached house. But what I've heard some millennials doing is they rent in the city and then buy a property in a more affordable market, such as London, Ontario, or Kitchener Waterloo area. That way, they're able to build up equity and um, you know maybe eventually buy in the big city. I love that idea. If you can't, you don't have to live in the house that you buy. Just buy something and start building that equity. Sean, thank you so much for being our guest today. So great to be here. We'll be back to share our final thoughts about mortgages and millennials. The Mothers of Real Estate is sponsored by Streetwise Mortgages, an award-winning mortgage brokerage serving clients across Ontario. Book a complimentary consultation or learn more at streetwisemortgages.com. Are you looking to build wealth through real estate? Streetwise Mortgages can help you design a financing strategy to achieve your short and long-term investment goals and set up financing in a manner that takes into consideration the legal and accounting structures relating to building wealth. Get a step closer to achieving your goals. To book your complimentary consultation, call 1-800-208-6255 or email info at streetwisemortgages.com. Welcome back. We were speaking with finance expert and author of Burn Your Mortgage, Sean Cooper. Ladies, was Sean not a phenomenal guest, an inspirational millennial? It actually took me down memory lane, remembering when my husband and I bought our first home at the tender age <laughs> of 28, one year later than when Sean bought his. Yeah, that's about when I got into home ownership as well. I bought my first condo. But you know, it wasn't until I was in my mid-30s that I actually started using the word cash flow as part of my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like a very late bloomer compared to Sean. <laughs> compared to Sean. Yeah. Well, he certainly seemed like such a motivated, just so motivated on that path. Incredible how he could have accomplished such a huge financial goal in such a short time. I was just really struck by one particular thing he said, which is you need to know where you are to know where you're going. And mm -hmm. of course, in our course, we always point people to you know, their net worth statement and their, the, your daily budget because how on earth will you know how you're going to come up with this money if you don't know how you are spending your money? It is such an important starting point. And it's a very vulnerable process to go through where you kind of say, okay, this is where I want to be and here's where I am and there's a huge mismatch. I know for me, it was a little bit of a letdown when I had to go through that. <laughs> I, I, I felt, really? This is all you've yeah. got? And I had to get over it. It's mm -hmm. a bit of an ego. <laughs> it's, it's very deflating to the ego. Mm -hmm. But as long as you um, stay true to your goals mm -hmm. and get past that <laughs> ego hit, I think it's actually a really smart exercise and I think a lot of people do um, refrain from doing it. Right. I've talked to a lot of investors and a lot of people who They're started with afraid. their course. <laughs> yeah. They are. And fear, they always say fear is what really stops people. A confused mind does not act. And when people are scared, they're less likely to do things. So everyone needs to map these things out and uh -huh. then you can get the help you need to move forward. But I wonder, do you think that people are too afraid to do the budget or they just don't want to know the truth? They don't the want to see that they actually spend way too much money on and Starbucks um, or avocado toast or whatever it is, the you know breakfast that people do. Like maybe that's it. Maybe mm -hmm. it's not that they're afraid to do the budget, but they don't really want to change. Yep. They don't want to change their, their world today. It's a reality yeah. change. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a reality check. And mm -hmm. it's also uh, something that puts you in a situation where you're now, oh, you have to make a commitment. Am I going to continue to be loyal to my spending habits? <laughs> or am I willing to make my some sacrifices money. and go in a different direction? And mm -hmm. I know for me, it was, a, it was a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. And you don't just turn it on like that. Sean is very lucky that he is firm in his, um, ground, firmly grounded in his mm -hmm. goals. And I really appreciate that yeah, about him but you don't have to necessarily be as drastic no. as no. what he did like parents as a parent it's hard like we can't and we always say with more we can't just live off craft dinner no you know we can't sell our cars and, and you imagine can't you and I Jillian we had our four kids on our bikes <laughs> riding around I mean it would it's never just work. not reasonable. No, so it but has to fit. There yeah. always are ways when there's a what? What do you say? There's a when there, why. When there's a why. There's a way. When there's a way. I was going to say when there's a will, there's a way, but I'm going to use your phrase. There's a why. And it has to fit with your life, mm -hmm. not 
fight mm -hmm. with your life. I remember, this reminds me of one of our students who took our course and how she wanted to get into real estate, but she was just a bit nervous about doing it as an investment property. Mm -hmm. So she did something very similar to Sean. She added a basement suite mm -hmm. to her personal residence. Mm -hmm. Now I believe they lived in the top floor and rented out the right. basement, but it was an excellent way for them to generate these extra in, uh, income every month right. and get their feet wet on being landlords. Right. And they weren't living in a house that was basically renter ready. They mm -hmm. actually had a basement that was not serving their financial goals. So she came up with the idea to say, well, why don't we renovate it? Why don't we make it a legal basement apartment mm -hmm. and uh, basically tippy toe our way into yeah. being investors right. and It doesn't landlords. have to be extreme. It doesn't. Exactly. It does not. And I think, again, getting the cash flow calculator from our site or getting the, the net, what is it, it's the net worth calculator yeah. and it's the daily budget. These are the, these are the documents that are going to anchor you in the reality of your current financial situation that you're going to have to marry up to what your financial goals are. That's the only way really to get started, right? Absolutely. So getting clear on your goals. Yes. And I, you know, I, I'm married to a man who's very risk averse. We call him Mr. No very affectionately, but that's his personality. And one of the hurdles for me was not just figuring out what my goals were, but juggling his goals right. and, and like mixing them up and coming up. It's a dance. It is a dance. It <laughs> continues to be a dance. And he didn't necessarily want to go into the world right. of real estate and mm -hmm. he's rocking it now, but man, it took some arm twisting. Yes, absolutely. So now, now that we just spoke with this amazing millennial, how is, how is it going to be with our own kids? I mean, what tips did you guys learn today to share with your own short people at our I'm gonna, house? I'm going to get my kids to do the side hustle at university so that they can come out with a $250,000 down payment for their home, or whatever, $170,000 down payment for their home. I'm going to go home with this in in inspiring tale for them. <laughs> my kids are going to start thinking of creative ways of how they're going to save up money towards their university education. I'm not giving them a free ride like you are. Thank you, ladies. I think that's all the time we have for today, but it was another excellent episode. Mm -hmm. it was. And thank you for joining us today. For more information about our online training, please visit mothersofrealestate.com. The Mothers of Real Estate is sponsored by Streetwise Mortgages, an award-winning mortgage brokerage serving clients across Ontario. Book a complimentary consultation or learn more at streetwisemortgages.com.